Welcome back to Huawei Routing and Switching Elite Training. Today topic we are going to discuss on STP Spanning Tree Protocol. Let's start our part 2. Alright, so let's look into this topology. As you can see from here, I have three switches. Switch 1, Switch 2, and Switch 3. Now from here, the Switch 1 have a priority of 0, Switch 2 have a priority of 1, and Switch 3 have a priority of 2. Whereas the path cost between uh, these two switches, between switch 1 and switch 2, the cost is 5. Between switch 2 and switch 3, the cost is 4. And between switch 1 and switch 3, the cost is 10. Okay. Now, when all the switch are switched on, uh, it go into initialization. So BBDU will be sent among themselves. S1 is going to send the BBDU to S2 and S1 will send to S3. When S1 send the configuration BBDU, this is the priority of the switch, which is the root bridge. It will assume that he is the root bridge, so the root cost is zero, the bridge ID is zero, and the port ID is A1. So same go for this as well, okay? Now if you look into the switch two, switch two is going to send its own uh, root ID, which is, is claim itself as the root, so you have a priority of 1. So you claim yourself as a root, so you have a cost of a 0, and your bridge ID is 1, so you can see that it's the same. Okay, so once the BBDU has been exchanged and is settled down, you notice that I have the lowest priority number. Lowest priority number means that you have the highest priority. So since you have a highest priority, you can see that the S1 BBDU is uh, overriding the port B1. So port B1 now having a configuration BBDU of 000. So same thing go for the port C1 as well. Now just now on the switch 2, as you can see that my root priority is 1, I still having a root cost as a zero and the uh, bridge ID as one. So here we also have the same on the switch C3. All right, so on the next exchange, you will notice that you notice that here, just now it was one, it's changed to zero, okay? So because here I have the BPDU, and here I have a BPDU. So this BPDU, the priority of zero, whereas just now this was one, and now it's being replaced by zero. If you still remember that the cost over here is five, so the root bridge, the cost is of is zero. So for your outbound interface toward to the root, so the cost is five. And this is your bridge uh, ID, all right, the bridge priority, which is one. Okay, and you have a B2. So same thing over here, you have a, uh, early on you have a priority of 2, so it's being replaced by 0, which is the root priority, and this is a 10. Now the 10 over here is because that you are actually sending to uh, S1 sent to S3, and the cost over here is equal 10. So that is where you have the 10 here, and the priority of a 2 is your bridge priority. So now we have our root bridge. All right, and this two is a non-root bridge. Now once you examine that uh, we already have the root bridge, now root bridge always have the designated port. Okay, so the designated port is the one who actually sent out the BPDU. Okay. Right, so if this is your designated port, the opposite port here is called root port. So this guy is called root port. Okay, so now you understand on um, how you can select the root bridge and how you can determine the designated port and the root port. Now next we are going to look into the selection of the root port and designated port. So let me go back into this explanation. So here we are going to look into selection of the root port and the designated port. 
Now with this step, we already uh, know the uh, non-root bridge and the root bridge. So the second procedure is more important. The device calculated a configuration BPDU. The calculated configuration BPDU is from your root bridge. All right, for each designated port based on configuration BPDU and the path of the root port. Now the first thing here, let's look into the first point. The root bridge is replaced with the root bridge ID of the configuration BPDU of the root port. If let's say we go into this diagram, you'll notice that this port is being replaced by the root bridge. You can see that is 000 port A1 and 000 port A2. So this is what it means. All right, that's the first point. Now, second point here is the root path course is replaced with the root path course in the configuration BBDU on the root port plus the path course to the root port. It means that if you look into this topology, you will notice that I have a 1, 0, 1. 1 is the switch number 2 root ID. The 0 is the root cost. Okay, and this is my bridge ID. Now see what will happen. So once you already configure yourself as a root port, you will notice that now it's being replaced by 051 as per compared to just now is 101. Now it's become 051. And you notice that this also changed to 0102. So the 5 here is a cost of 5. 10 here is a cost of 10. That is what it means. Okay, so here the root path cost is replaced with the root path cost in the configuration BBDU on the root pod plus the path cost of the root. And the sender BID is replaced by the device ID and the next in the pod is replaced with the pod ID as I showed you early on. Now on the procedure number three, the device compare the calculated BPDU with the configuration BPDU on the port. Now, what does it mean here? On this procedure, if I go back, you notice that once I agree that this is my designated port and the root port on both sides, you notice that between switch 2, port B2, and switch 3, port C2, you have two of these as a designated port. And we know that that's another port will be forwarding, so we will have a loop. Now here, we don't have a loop because that the second exchange of the uh, BBDU happened. So as you can see that now, switch 2 is sending this configuration BBDU towards switch 3, and switch 3 is sending this BBDU towards switch 2. So I'm sending these parameters toward the uh, S3. Now when S3 receive and do a comparison, the configuration BBDU is 0, 10, 2, and I receive a calculated BBDU is 0, 5, 1. What really happened here is, since the root ID is the same, so there is a tie, the next thing they are looking into is the root path cost. The root path cost of 5 is lower compared to 10. So what really happened over here is, now, from the uh, 10, as you can see that just now is 0, 10, 2. Now it's being replaced by 0, 5, 1. So here, I will already have a designated port, and here I have a root port. So this is what it means. So if the calculated configuration BPDU has a higher priority, which in this case is the switch 2, the port is selected as a designated port and the BBDU is replaced with the calculated configuration BBDU. And this port will periodically send the calculated BBDU. All right. So, and the last one here on this point here, if the configuration BBDU, this time is configuration BBDU of the port, has a higher priority, the configuration BBDU on the port is not updated and the port is blocked. 
and when the port is blocked you can only receive the configuration BBDU but do not forward the data or send configuration BBDU. Now if we go back to this diagram you were able to notice that once I agree that this is my root port here so I need to remember this port early on is still a root port okay this is a designated port Designated port. But once I agree that this is more superior, all right, because if you look into the cost here, this is a cost of 5 and this is a cost of 4, this is a cost of 10. So 5 plus 4, 9. And here I have 10 plus 4 equal to 14. So I will not use this path. So this path is more superior. So hence, what will happen here is that this port will be blocked. Now when this port is blocked because that the cost is higher compared to here, but the priority on C1 is still superior compared to uh, this port. So what really happened over here is, you can see that they will retain the 0, 9, and 2, that's from C1. So here, this port will be blocked. All right. So now you already see how the calculation of STP. So all in all, please remember that first look into the root port, then next between the non-root bridge, okay, root bridge, non-root bridge, they are going to look into uh, the cost. So if this cost is actually lower compared to here, so this port will become the root port and this one will become the alternate port. Okay, now we have another scenario, a scenario where we have the equal cost path. In this diagram, we can see that I have two switches. Switch 1 have a bridge ID of 0 and switch 2 have a bridge ID of 4096. So clearly, this is a lower priority, so the lower number means high priority. So the port over here will be in forwarding, so we will have a designated port designated port. So if let's say both the cost is the same, then we will have a tie. So if there is a cost that is having a tie, the next thing we are going to look into is a port ID. So port 0 and port 1. Port 0 is a lower port number compared to port 1, so port 1 will be in the alternate port. All right. Now same thing go for uh, another topology. In this topology, you notice that I'm actually connecting through one single uh, connection and maybe here I have a hub. Alright again since that my priority is 0 and this priority is 4096 so this will become the root bridge and this will become the non root bridge and the cost is also the same so again we are going to just do a comparison based on the port ID. The port ID number lower will be preferred so in this case we have the E0 as the root port Okay, and this will become the alternate port. All right. Now let's look into these two topology. So in this topology, uh, very clearly that the this bridge ID is zero, four zero nine six and eight one nine two. Now typically, root bridge is the one who origin the BBDU. So the BBDU is being sent from the root bridge toward to the non root bridge. So here I have a designated port. So designated port will forward the BBDU. Okay, now if you compare to the one on the right hand side here, we still have the same topology except that now I have added the S4. Now S4 have a bridge ID of 32768. Now under these circumstances, please remember that here I have a designated port. Now a designated port on a non-root bridge, which is this guy is non-root bridge, will send an optimum BBDU only after receiving BBDU with a lower priority. Now what I mean over here is the S4 is lower priority compared to both of these. So it actually send this BBDU toward to S2 and S3. Now S3 is an alternate port but in S2 here we have a root port and this is my designated port. Now under these circumstances where S4 have a lower priority 
compared to S2. S2 is a designated port. S2 will send BBDU to the lower priority switch. So this is the behavior when you have a designated port on a non-root bridge will send optimum BBDU. Only receive a BBDU with a lower priority. All right, so uh, this is something that you have to be aware of. Now, under the normal circumstances, even we run SDP, we still have a temporary loop. Now, let's look into this example. On this topology on the left, I have three switches, but I do not have any redundant link. So even I do not have a redundant link, my SDP is running, I still have a designator port and the root port over here. Okay, so this is my designator port and I have a root port because here I do not have any redundant link. Okay, now assuming that now I add a new link, now things will be different. Now once you add a new link, the SDP will kick in, but the SDP kick in is not instantless. Right? So it, it means that it will not immediately that it will able to know that this port have to be forward or this port have to be blocked. All right? So they need to go through the calculation. So in this brief period of time, there will be a temporary loop and this is quite normal. So that leads us to the next topic here, which is the device port status. In 802.1D, under the IEEE spanning tree, the traditional one, we have this type of port status. Okay. Now, most of the time you're able to see is either blocking or forwarding because the listening and learning is in a transition state. Now, disable is a port that you are down. The port is actually down. So again, over here, it doesn't send BBDU. It doesn't receive BBDU. It doesn't learn BBDU. And of course, it is down. It will not forward uh, any data, all right, because the port is down. Now, this too is the uh, permanent state, all right? This is the, the state that is more permanent. It's either a blocking or forwarding. Now, if let's say the port of the interface is blocking, you will not send the BBDU, but you do receive BBDU. Now, of course, you have, if you are blocking, you will not send the forwarding uh, data. You will not forward any data. So this is the final state of the block port. And if let's say you are forwarding, of course, you will send and receive BBDU. Of course, you will learn the MAC address. And of course, you are going to do a forwarding of the data. So this is where you are uh, designated the port or the root port. Okay, now this two is in transition, so it's either listening or learning. In listening and learning, you notice that you do send and receive. But what you need to know here is, in these two transitional uh, port status, both of these status doesn't actually forward data. Okay, so in listening, you were just listening to the BBDU, but you are not learning the MAC address. In learning, you were listening and uh, sending the BBDU at the same time you will learn about the MAC address so now you have it the different status and uh, it's important for you to know that under what status you know how they process the BBDU whether they learn the MAC address or whether they will forward the data or not thanks for watching please do not forget to subscribe to our channel